Hey everybody, welcome to Prop Live, your weekly prop and costume making Q&A session. I am Bill, and usually we have a guest, but not today. No, today you're stuck in here with me. That's right. This is a Bill Solo show. Uh, except me and my me and my uh, my cat, me and Buddha Cat are hanging out kind of there, or a picture of him. Uh, hey everybody, welcome to Prop Live. We've got some questions rolling in from our wonderful prop tarts in the chat. See lots of regular names in there like Modulus Props, who we just saw at uh, Portland in Portland at Rose City Comic Con, um, Phoenix Revival. I see. Brooks Creations, DLC props, lots of guys in the chat here live on our Twitch channel, twitch.tv slash punished props. If you are just now joining us live and you have a prop and costume making technique question or just some question for me that you want to send to me, go to punishedprops.com slash live and you can send questions there all week long if you want. And they will, uh, very likely, they will show up on the next episode. Uh, we do delete them after the show and start fresh every week so that everyone gets a good chance but yes we are collecting questions right now we've already got some in there but we'll take some more and uh, we need some more we need your questions your questions make this show so head on over to punishprops.com slash live submit your prop and costume making questions or in this case today questions about our cat maybe questions about the noise in the background it's a 3d printer going whatever you got send them our way and i will be happy to answer them let me give you an update on what's been going on on uh at punished props let's just let's give a little rundown it's been a busy week we've had a lot going on um let's head on over to oh look at punishprops.com i did uh i did something fun i went to we went to dragon Con. we go every year but I put together a, uh, a bit of a, a music video for Dragon Con. Um, stepping on the toes of Beatdown Boogie and Sneaky Zebra. Uh, but I tried to do something a little different. Uh, every year we go to Dragon Con. It's my favorite convention. And I wanted to kind of um, capture the essence of Dragon Con. So, for example, there we are waiting for an elevator. <laughs> which is which is how you spend just about half of your time at, uh, at Dragon Con. Um, so I wanted to do a little bit of storytelling. So yes, there are, there's music. Yes, there's lots of uh, there's lots of costumes. But also, I try to kind of tell the story of Dragon Con, us going there, us hanging out, having fun, um, and then uh, and then it ending at the end. It gets really sad. But after the ending, there's like two minutes of just shenanigans with my friends and I. Um, so it's worth checking out. That's all on, you can go to PunishProps.com or our YouTube channel to check that out. Uh, and yeah, please, please go check it out. It's something new that I've tried. Tried to be creative with my video making and I'm pretty proud of it. Uh, so go give it a watch. I see some people in the chat throw in some questions. If you want to submit something for me to answer today, just go to Punish, excuse me, PunishProps.com slash live. There's a form there, just dump it in there. Brittany, my wonderful wife, Brittany, is upstairs and in the chat, and she is wrangling all of those questions and dumping them into my uh, doc, my show doc here. Let's see, what else do we have? Oh, I mentioned Rose City Comic Con. That was super fun. We sort of uh, flew by the seat of our pants and showed up for a day and a half, and uh, that's down in Portland. It's about a three-hour drive from us, so we zipped down there. Our wonderful friends, Animia and Ryan Wells, gave us some booth space in the cosplay area. We brought a pile of books. We talked to a whole bunch of you guys. We made a lot of friends. Uh, we sold some books. We saw a lot of cool costumes. And we got to talk shop with a lot of people. That was really, really fun. Rose City Comic Con is, uh, is getting to be a real thing, a real cool thing. And I think we're going to make sure we go every single year. Maybe next year we'll plan a little bit more. We literally bought our, paid for or uh, reserved our hotel room the night before. <laughs> and, and then just got in the car, filled the trunk with books and drove down. So Rose City was cool. Also, while we were there, there's a company, I believe they're called Shapeify Me. Shapeify Me. Shapeify.me. 
Um, and if it loads, I'll show you. Yeah, this was it here. These guys were there. They had a booth, and it's this giant 3D scanner that you can stand in. And they were scanning people, uh, and they had some options you could send them, or they could send you the files, they could do a 3D print of you. It, I thought it was really cool, uh, a really cool way to sort of capture you in your costume. So we did a couple things. Oh, here's one of them. The first thing we did is uh, Brittany and I got scanned just standing in a normal pose without our costumes, without my hat. Uh, just to have a 3D model that's a scan of my body that I will then dump into uh, 3D modeling software and I could then model costume pieces on top of it and then I could like 3D print those or make them for Pepakura. Uh, but since I had that little file, I printed it and there's a good print upstairs. The one down here failed and I have no arms. <laughs> so you can see... Uh, it went a little bit sideways. I printed it standing like this. I actually just flipped it over and printed it, and it and it printed the arms better. Um, and this thing can be scaled and printed in a variety of sizes, uh, but I just printed it like this for fun. Um, so that was the first thing we did. We each got our body scanned like this, both for printing a little part. I could build little armor pieces for him. And my favorite part, mocking up costume pieces in a 3D model. So we have those. But then we put on our costumes and we went back to their booth and got scanned again. And we got scanned together, Brittany and I, in our Assaultron and Mechanist costumes. We got scanned and then I got those and I printed them on the Form Labs. Ta-da! So there is us in our costumes printed out. This took... I think 10 hours to print or something crazy. It was probably longer than that. But there's Brittany and her Assaultron. And there's me and my Mechanist. And we printed it out. And uh, <laughs> I think this is just the coolest thing ever. And I will probably... Um, I will probably uh, paint this, I think. Just sand it up and paint it and keep it forever. So that's... That's really great. Yeah, I recommend uh, if it was, I think, like 70 bucks, I think, to get scanned and then to get just the file. And it's more if you want them to print a thing for you. Worth every penny, uh, in my opinion. That was cool. I see someone pointing out in the chat I should make a yeah DLC prop says, Bill action figure. Maybe I'll take this model and cut it up and put joints like a, like a uh, rotating joints and stuff. Like a uh, G.I. Joe action figure. And then you can print the pieces out and snap them together. I don't know. I'll see what I'm going to do with this. If I do that, I will make the files freely available. And you guys can have your own Bill action figure. Um, but we'll see. We'll see if I if I can make that happen. That would be a fun challenge. Let's see. What else is on my list? We've been, It's been a, crammed a lot in the last week. Uh, other than that, we've been playing around with 3D printers. You hear the Form 2 going in the background. Um, unfortunately, that... I will not have that much longer. I'm that's Form Labs printer is going to my buddy Joel Telling, so he can review it. And uh, but we've got a lot of good use out of it, including our awesome action figures. Um, I got a video going up tomorrow again using that Form Labs. I made tires for my Mad Max RC car, so that video is going up tomorrow. Um, I need to finish that. <laughs> Uh, oh, Phoenix Revival says, Bio Cosplay will have a field day with a Bill action figure. Okay, you know what? Just so that Sam can have a Bill action figure, I am committing to eventually making a Bill action figure. So that, mark my words. I don't know when, but at some point, Sam will get a Bill action figure. Um, what other 3D printing stuff do we have? Oh, uh, not 3D printing. One of the questions we get from you guys all the time is about sealing foam. There are lots of different methods. There's lots of different opinions on whether or not you even need to seal foam. So we are putting together a comprehensive video covering just about every method for sealing foam that we can think of, um, including flex bond. We got our hands on some flex bond, uh, including not sealing your foam, just painting it, including things like... Um, what else? Well, latex rubber, my favorite method. We also have neoprene rubber, 
We also have uh, Plasti Dip. We've got Mod Podge, Wood Glue. Uh, we got our hands on some of that um, Epsilon Pro. If Core Geek is here, can you hear me, Eric? I got some Epsilon Pro. We're going to put all of those different sealing methods to the test, not necessarily to find out if there's a best method, but to see what the best method is for whatever it is you're trying to make with whatever materials you have available to you. So that video is going up on Monday. Um, we're going to probably spend all weekend shooting that because it's there's a lot. There's a lot of stuff. But Brittany was getting a bunch of stuff ready uh, earlier today. So look forward to that. That one's going to be really good. It's also going to be a lot of work. So thank you, everyone. Hey, that segues right into thank you, everyone, on Patreon for supporting our videos. That money goes directly into things like buying all these materials to test out or carving out our weekend so that we can test all the materials and film it all for you guys. Our patrons are simply the best. Uh, and you guys are amazing. And that's at patreon.com slash punished props. If you would also like to help out, help us make more videos. Cheers to you. I'm going to have it's water, I promise. Mm. Now we're ready. Hey, Patch is here. I see him in the chat. Now we're ready to get started and grab a bunch of your questions. Thank you for putting up with all my shenanigans. Let's get started. Diego is making the Okami skin from Overwatch. But uh, I'm not sure how to make the wolf headdress. All right, we've got a, we got a picture. This is Hanzo's Okami uh, skin. He wants to make the wolf headdress. I would... Now, it depends on what sort of finishing techniques you want to play with, but I would look into checking out how furries put together their heads. Usually, there's some sort of uh, helmet piece and then lots of layered fur, um, or like faux fur. Uh, you can get glass eyes. You can get rubber nose pieces. Um, look up taxidermy uh, supplies. Look up... Uh, like I said, furries. There's got. I'm. I'm sure there are um, forums on that sort of thing, and that's where I would start. Um, cloth and probably foam if you have to bulk things out, like insul or not insulation, but um, upholstery foam for bulking stuff out. Maybe some sort of hat that you can build all of this on top of, and then faux fur, uh, and then whatever eyes people will use for taxidermy. Uh, also, Adam Savage did a really good video on how he made the head for his bear from uh, the Revenant bear that he did. Head, the Revenant bear that he did for uh, Comic Con. So that video, in fact, we will put a link to that video in the show notes. You can go check that out as well. So somewhere in all of those um, uh, recommendations I gave you lies the answer. You will have to tinker a little bit to get it just right. Uh, but there you go. Thank you, Diego, for the question. And good luck. That'll be a really cool one. I have a feeling that not a lot of people are going to do that particular skin. So uh, so you will definitely stand out. And you will definitely be very warm at BlizzCon. And Hey Patch is pointing out that he was, in fact, on time today. Very good. <laughs> okay. Let's move on. Prop Circles, which is a great name, I think. Prop Circles wants to know, do you have any computers or laptops that you would recommend for someone getting started in 3D modeling and 3D printing? I'm going to send you to um, to Lifehacker uh, Computer Build. Uh, they have a really good article. All right, I'm going to show you this right here. Lifehacker.com. The best PCs you can build for $300, $600, $1,200. $1,200. dollars this gets updated regularly, and uh, it gives you links to guides on how to build computers. There's tips, but most importantly, um, looks like it's been a while for since they've updated, but the information is still good. Most importantly, uh, they list out these builds. Here's the $300 budget system. No joke. You can put together a whole computer for $300. They list everything, including all the parts. So you can just go buy all these and put it together and you'll have a machine. Uh, and then the $600, this is where we uh, landed because we built a Brit uh, computer for Brit. We built a Brittany. <laughs> 
We built a computer for Brittany, and we started right around that six hundred dollar price point. Um, and you can mix and match some of the bits there. So if you want to spend a little bit less, maybe um, swap out uh, some of the things. But for this guy, I think we ended up going and uh, what did we upgrade? Upgrading the memory. So this one is with eight gigs of memory for fifty bucks. You could double that and get. 16 gigs for just another 50 bucks i think which i which is a really good way to upgrade the performance on your computer uh and then put a solid state drive in that thing uh ssds are coming way down in price so instead of running it off a spinning drive you could get a half terabyte ssd in there and you would have a killer system for doing your 3d modeling so anyway we will link to that article over at lifehacker we'll link to it i'll throw it in the chat right now check it out you guys but we'll dump that in the show notes you can go check that out that's where i tell people to start if you want a live stream if you want a 3d model and if you want a game and i think for this guy you'd probably spend closer to 1200 bucks if you were gonna game on it um but that should get you started and don't worry about building a pc it's not that hard they have links in that article to tutorials and how to do all that stuff um but that'll work out great uh, personally, I use a, a Mac, an um, iMac thingy. I think there's 16 gigs of RAM in this thing. Uh, this is a t late 2013 model, 27-inch iMac. It does pretty good. If you want to get more bang for your buck, go build it yourself. Um, and then, oh, this is cool. Lon is in the chat. PC, PC per? PC Perspective um, has a similar article uh with a whole bunch of different builds which is cool so we'll dump that link in the chat as w or in the, the show notes as well uh thanks lon lon's a cool guy let's move forward prop circles good question uh next one transmuted elf were you transmuted into an elf or were you transmuted from an elf so are you like a rock now Everyone wants to know the burning questions. What type of blades do you use for your bandsaw to cut foam and where do you get them? I have in the past told people about um, soft material blades. You can get them at McMaster Car. Uh, it's a scalloped razor sharp blade. Uh, I actually don't use mine very much. What I end up doing is leaving an 18 TPI metal cutting blade on the bandsaw. Uh, because it works for a lot of other materials and it does a plenty good job of cutting foam. Um, the main problem with that soft material blade is that it doesn't remove material um, the way that a, a toothed blade will. That actually carves out a trench. The soft materials blade, if I'm pushing a piece of foam against the fence, it will. there's a ton of friction there and it'll actually bind up my little bandsaw i'm sure if i put that on my big bandsaw it wouldn't be a problem um but uh long story short i ended up not using that blade very much i just put a metal cutting blade in there and i use that for foam and it works great um so there you go transmuted elf um next one comes from pumpkin pumpkin wants to know uh, i'm working a costume of anna from overwatch I'm bringing up a picture here okay it's, it's a picture of a gun I'm not sure how to make the glowing orbs on her chest or the glowing ammo for her gun. Ooh. Uh, do you have any ideas on how to make these pieces glow softly without electronics or does this require lights? Any suggestions? Appreciated. All right. Here is the picture. So we got this yellow glowing bit on there. Um, there are lots of different ways to do it. I would put some lights in there, but that doesn't mean that you have to um, that you have to build something from scratch. I'm looking up on Amazon right now. Uh, these things, these things are super cool and super cheap. It's a tube with an LED thing in the base of it. It's uh, I don't know what you would call it. It's for yeah, you can see how it's glowing red. Uh, and I think you can get them in different colors. This is like for emergencies. 
and it's got a strobe like when you just push the button and it changes the different modes it's got a flashlight on one side but the it's got a whistle so you got that going for you but it's got just this tube um, and I believe you can get them in different colors or you could uh, paint it a different color so that it glows whatever color you want um, but the the tube on the end is just like a, a white plastic and you could cut that shorter if you needed to and then just slide that into your gun and uh, oh, yeah that, that white tube thing and then slide that into your gun and then all you have to do is just push that button and it'll start glowing. So that is definitely the easiest way to put LEDs or lights into your uh, into your gun. Uh, and then just getting it the right color would be the only challenge, which would mean maybe rolling up a tube of uh, yellow acetate plastic and putting it in there. I don't know. You got some options. Um, you can find usually find those things at a hardware store too, and just play with them in the aisle to see if they'll work for you. Uh, that would be my recommendation, pumpkin. So you go ahead and oh, there's another picture. Let's see here. Um, yeah, there's wider, the chest armor is wider glowing tubes. It's a little bit more of a wider diameter. So you might be able to find a similar solution for that. Um, again, look at, look at, um, pre-made, uh, LED arrays. I've got, uh, what do I have here? I think I have one. Hold on. These guys here, uh, Something like this, you could just put a tube on it and then cap it, and then that tube could be um, uh, colored, whatever you want. So, like, get a plastic tube that's about the same size, that's kind of transparent, paint it yellow. Whoa, I didn't know there were batteries in that. There you go. So, just look up pre-made LED lights. I don't know what specifically this thing is, but... Um, I believe you can get these for Harbor, for Harbor Freight for a quarter. <laughs> Thank you, Pumpkin. Let's grab the next question. Uh, and let's also say hello to TNT Cosplay Supply in the chat. Uh, welcome. Uh, and Lon, Lon says he's remembering he needs to place an order there. Yeah, you do. Let's talk to KPH with a question. I'm currently working on my first EVA foam sniper rifle. I know you've made see-through sights with your 3D printer. But do you have any ideas for doing the same thing with a low-tech solution? I only have basic power tools, and the gun I'm making has both a sight barrel up top and a clear cover where the ammo loads. So you can just get sheets of acrylic plastic in a variety of colors. We have a local place here called Tap Plastics. That's where I go to get all of my plastic. They even have a cutoff bin uh, with sheets like yay big. And I just stock up on that. Most everything I make is smaller than that. You can get it in a variety of thicknesses. And then if you need to etch the surface at all, you can just use a Dremel tool with a small grinding bit and just sort of etch the surface. Uh, you could also use a laser if you've got access to it. Um, that's really, really handy. Um, I 3D printed one of those just as sort of a challenge to myself, and it worked out okay, but I think I would use the laser the next time. Um, but basically, just get your little piece of acrylic plastic, Whatever color you need it to be, draw your pattern on there lightly and then etch that with the end of a small uh, grinding bit on your Dremel tool. And that'll get you most of the way there. My brother did that for, it was sort of like a data pad for Pepper Potts for his wife. And um, he it was a, no, it was a um, a book reading light. It was a big sheet with a, with lights on the side of it, pre-made, and you just etched the surface of it with a Dremel, and then when you turn on the light, all those light lines lit up, and it looked amazing. Um, there you go. There's a simple low-tech solution for your sight problem. Uh, not your sight problem. <laughs> your gun sight problem. If you have a sight problem, go see an ophthalmologist. All right. Next is Kristen. I go to lots of local conventions, but have been wanting to visit Dragon Con for a while. Yeah, you have. Dragon Con is the best. Would you recommend it to someone who doesn't like large crowds? Any tips for first-timers? Okay, so... 
what I've learned is that what you get out of Dragon Con is what you make of it yourself. What I mean is there's something for everyone at Dragon Con. And if you just show up going, I've heard it's a good time. I'm here now. Be amazing. It's not really going to happen. Um, you got to go in. Well, showing up and just going to the main Marriott and uh, hotel and just letting it wash over you on your first year. That's one way to do it. That is very crowd heavy. There are a lot of people there, but there is lots to do at Dragon Con that doesn't involve large crowds. There's panels galore. There's uh, what they call tracks. So a podcasting track or a costuming track. Uh, and each one of those tracks has programming for lots of different panels. So you can go see panels. You can uh, you could just go hang out with people. There's a gaming area where you can just go play tabletop games literally all weekend long. You never have to see uh, the crowds at all. You can just go play games. There is also there's meetups, all kinds of meetups for all kinds of reasons. What we usually look for is whatever costume we're in. There's generally going to be a group for that costume. So a Mass Effect cosplay meetup where they'll do a big photo shoot with the whole group. Or we did the um, we did a um, Borderlands one uh, before. We've done uh, Dragon Age or why can't I think of the one I did this year? Fallout. We did a huge Fallout group. So if you're doing the cosplay thing and you want to go meet a lot of people, then dress up as someone from Mass Effect and then go find the Mass Effect meetup. We did a Prop Tart meetup, which was amazing. That was really fun. Uh, what else? What else is there to do? There's a huge vendor area uh, that, where you can go check out um, a bunch of goodies that people are selling, and also an artist alley. There is something for everyone at Dragon Con, and but but you gotta make that experience for yourself. So just know that it's all out there. Do a little bit of research. Um, see what other groups are going to be there. Uh, but I absolutely recommend it, even if you don't like large crowds. If you have a hotel room nearby. And you're like, boy, these crowds are getting out of hand. You can just zip over to your hotel room and take a break. I do that from time to time. Um, there you go, Kristen. Hopefully, I've sold Dragon Con. I know you guys are like, Bill, we're sick of hearing about Dragon Con. I don't care. I'm going to talk about it more until each and every one of you goes there next year, 2017. We'll have twice the size of the, the Phone Smith meetup or the, the Prop Tart meetup. Matthew has a question. Suggestions for making uh, smooth seams between large sheets of EVA. It's for a giant greatsword that's longer than a sheet of foam. So this goes for any seams at all. And by the way, I have a video on making really good seams. We'll link to that in the show notes. And then Evil Ted has a really good video on using Quick Seal to, to fill in any gaps in between the seams that you have. So those are two things. One... Make the seams really good using contact cement like barge. And two, you can fill them in a little bit using quick seal. Again, links to videos in the description. But in general, when you're putting two seams together or two sheets of foam together, you want to brush a good contact cement like barge uh, on both sides. Let it dry completely. Uh, if it's still wet or tacky at all, that'll affect the, the making gaps on there. Uh, and then slowly but surely put those seams together until it's nice and smooth. Uh, that that comes with a lot of practice. Um, so if you have some scraps, do a lot of practicing with those little scraps until your seams look nice and clean. Uh, then if you can, uh, I know the surface probably is supposed to look seamless, but if you can integrate some lines into the design a little bit where it looks like it's meant to be there, then you can get away with maybe having not perfect seams. But again, practice, 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 practice. Practice, keep your scraps. Thank you, Matthew. Let's grab another one. This one is, uh, according to one person, Throne Snatcher in the chat, is not sick of Dragon Con talk. Very good. All right, we'll bring it up again later. <laughs> Distemper says, I know you try to stay healthy and only splurge a little bit at cons like BlizzCon, especially with the bad, greasy foods available. Bad and greasy, but those food trucks are amazing. Uh, I would suggest the Fire and Ice restaurant down the street from the convention center. I've been there, and it's amazing. In fact, Brittany got a drink that had another drink in it. I don't know how they did that, but her drink, there was a drink that was like a big fancy booze-filled drink 
And then there's another smaller drink that they put in the drink. It was great. Uh, it's a, this is a Mongolian barbecue style place. Unlimited food, great atmosphere, and a great meetup. Yeah, that's what we did. We had a meetup there a couple years ago. Oh, there's a photo of me playing. Yes. Um, yeah, this was me. This was me uh, playing with fire. They let me play with fire. <laughs> it's the kind of place where they do goofy crap like... Um, uh, like in that case, they set a fire on the grill and then they give one lucky customer a water bottle. And when you spray water on it, it makes a giant flame. <laughs> so good recommendation, distemper. Good recommendation. And I will, I will second that recommendation. That place is pretty cool. All right. Let's chew through some more here. Steve engineer says i've built props and costumes for a while now and i want to start taking commissions how did you first find clients what is the best way to find clients I'll tell you what having your own website and running a blog where you are consistently making content is a great way to get people to find you because every new blog post you make about whatever it is you're building or photos of your thing that's a chance for people to find you on google uh, so I did that for a long time before I started taking any commissions. Every build I did, I made a build write up on it and I posted lots of photos on Flickr and on my page and on my, my Facebook page and punishprops.com. You can go back and see the very first one. It's not great, but it's all on there. And that's, those are all chances for people to find me. Um, and that's what I did. I built stuff for a couple of years before I got any clients. But eventually, I made a thing. It was probably my um, Maroon's Razor that went crazy. That got shared on uh, Bethesda's website. And then I got started getting commissions that way. Um, yeah, but generate content. Generate ways for people to find you. Uh, and I'll get, I'm, I'm going to give you all a little bit of a secret. You want to leg up, start making videos on YouTube. I know it's way harder than just posting pictures, but because it's more difficult, less people do it, it gives you a leg up. Start making videos like our buddy, Hey Patch, who's been making videos on YouTube that I enjoy very much. Cheers to you, Hey Patch. Mm. Looks like uh, TNT Cosplay Supply is working on getting the Dragon on 2017 and bringing a trailer to bring all the foam. Awesome! I really do hope you guys are there. Speaking of Hey Patch, he is. Uh, he's got a question for us. He says he tried to make the Shore Trooper helmet. Let me bring up the picture here. Whoop! There it is. This is the Shore Trooper. I saw this at uh, San Diego Comic Con, and I think it's super neat so it looks like a stormtrooper but it is the shore trooper anyway hey patch tried to make it using ev excuse me eva foam and although he measured out the template on his head cast the finished helmet was way too small do you have an uh do you have to account for the thickness when building a helmet yes you do uh make yourself a foam ruler so take a piece of your foam, like your floor mat, cut a strip of it, draw inch marks or millimeter marks or whatever, and then use that to take your measurements on your body or wherever, especially if it's wrapping around anything. That foam ruler is going to help you out a whole bunch. Um, it's amazing if you just wrap a, um, like a flexible ruler around your arm, it'll be like, oh, that's X amount of inches. And then you use the foam ruler. You're like, wow, that's a lot more. That thickness does makes a huge difference by as much as like 10% uh, or more, I would say. Bigger or wider or longer or whatever for all those parts. Um, I know that in uh, Evil Ted's helmet video, he just made a, a, a thing right on top of the uh, head cast. Doesn't hurt to make it a little bit bigger. Um, so you've got a little room. So there you go, Hey Patch. Good luck and try it again. Let's grab one from Chris. Does thinning barge cement lower its, its adhesive strength noticeably? Um, I bet there's a point at which it does uh, affect it. Although I'm not sure. I don't. I hardly ever thin barge that much uh, or at all, really. The only time I thin it is if it's getting old and a little bit, uh, a little thick. I'll thin it down a bit. Um, 
But I don't know. You may have to just test that a little bit. It seems like that'd be pretty a pretty quick little test. Just do a couple different um, dilutions of barge with thinner and glue together a bunch of different pieces of foam and see how it holds up. But I've never tried that. Uh, let's grab another one. Thank you, Chris. Next one. Uh, the one who invented Angry Circle. Okay. <laughs> uh, he says, I, wa I just want to know what you do with props that fail. I do fail. Um, I throw them away. No. <laughs> Occasionally, uh, things go completely sideways. And usually that means they uh, sit in my shop in a pile somewhere. And I never speak of them. Um, I'm trying to think of a specific example. A lot of times it's castings that just have too many bubbles I don't want to deal with. And I usually keep them until I don't have enough room and then I throw them away. <laughs> but maybe I'll take a, a note from our buddy Harrison over at Vulpen Props. He sends uh, dud castings out to his patrons. Um, I might have, At some point we're going to have to clean out that shop because it's getting kind of crammed full of stuff. And if I find any good stuff that I've uh, sort of discarded. I'll mail those out to my patrons. Um, so there you go. That's generally what we do. And I do fail, absolutely. Uh, if it's foam, I'll cut the foam apart and use it again. Let's see here. Brittany says, Bill has thrown failed things across the room, but it's been a while. It has been a while. <laughs> One of the first molds I had, it failed, and I threw that across the room. Uh, it was urethane, and I believe I cut that into pieces and threw it away. <laughs> and the last thing I threw, it actually it hasn't, has it been a while? I'm trying to think of the last time I threw something. I don't get super angry usually, but sometimes I get frustrated and I throw things. Uh, here we go. Ninja Moose has a question. Are you excited for Rise of Iron? Yes, I am. Have you seen any of the armor for the new expansion that you would like to plan or make? I did a video on one of the helmets that kind of looks like a ram, but it's for the Titan. And I did a video drawing some uh, concepts for that. So we'll link to that in the chat or in the show notes. So check that out. Uh, but yes, there's all kinds of stuff I want to make. I have a bunch of other things I need to finish first. Let's see. He says, also, you should add me on PS4 so we can shoot alien faces. Okay. <laughs> Thanks. Ninja Moose. Rev Chumley has a question. He says, what's your preferred plastic for printing? And I think he means 3D printing. Um, I'll tell you what. PLA is just easy to print. So that's this guy. Note, note that the arms fell off. That wasn't a problem with the plastic. <laughs> but um, I don't know. PLA is just dead simple. Uh, so for printing, I'll go with that. Sanding ABS is better, but, um, printing with ABS is a little bit, uh, trickier. I don't know. I've been, lately, I've just been turning to, um, PLA just cause it's easier to print. Everything's going to get coated with, uh, primer and sanded anyway. So yeah, I don't know. I haven't put a lot of thought into the, the materials. I really haven't put a, a lot of time into tweaking the, the, the settings for different types of printing, playing with different materials all that much. Uh, that came from Rev Chumley. Max Money wants to know, how hard is it to secure 3D printed parts to foam parts for builds, specifically for guns? Not that hard. Uh, super glue will do it. Just sand the 3D printed piece a little bit and then super glue it down. Um... Oh, I don't have my armor. The The armor pieces uh, uh, for my mechanist have 3D printed parts glued to the foam. But it was covered in latex first. So I cut a little hole through the latex down to the foam. And then I believe I just used... For that, I think I just used barge. I just put barge... I sanded and put barge on the 3D printed piece. And I put barge on the foam. Let it dry for five minutes. Stuck it down. Um, I did make sure that the 3D printed piece overlapped the latex and the foam a bit so that the latex wouldn't peel back. But I bet uh, super glue would work just fine as well. Thank you, Max Money. Well, you guys, questions are coming in hot and fast. This is fantastic. I'm going to chew through as many more as I can. Uh, next one is from Throne Snatcher. 
Hey Bill, I recently won some polyurethane resin and silicone, so I'm going to start my mold making journey. Could you give me some insight about polyurethane resin and which types of clay I should use to block out the mold boxes? You sir are in luck. We have a whole playlist on our YouTube channel on molding and casting. It's, uh, I think we have like 12 videos in there. One of them is specifically about urethane resins and then a bunch more on making silicone molds. So instead of going through all of that right now, I'm just going to recommend you go to that playlist. We will post a link in the uh, show notes. And also if you go to uh, punishprops.com, oops, and you go to techniques and go to molding and casting, everything you need to know is right there, including materials and then the whole playlist with all of our goodies. So go check that out. All right, let's grab the next one. That one, last one was Throne Snatcher. Thank you for the question. SD Glyph wants to know, hey, Bill, on your uh, recommendation, I picked up the Dremel printer. Cool. That's this guy right here. Um, let's see. Having a bit of trouble with the first layer adhesion on this applied build tape. Any tips? I don't know what to tell you because it worked for me right out of the gate. Um, you do have to make sure that it is... Um, uh, level to so go through the leveling process, and then I, I don't probably don't say this enough. The uh, the way I really unlock the potential for this printer is by using a different slicing software. You can use Cura. Ultimaker makes that, and it's free and it's pretty good. But I really like Simplify 3D, and it's like 150 bucks, so it's not cheap. But in my opinion, it's completely worth it. Once I swapped over to different software th than the uh, stock Dremel software, this printer just became a complete work workhorse, um, including doing things like printing a raft. So almost everything I print, I hit the option to print a raft. So it puts a bunch of material down on the bed first, and then it prints the, the piece on top of it. So start by using a raft if you can, and then... Maybe upgrade your software or try different software. So Cura, Simplify 3D, give it a go. Uh, thank you, SD Glyph. Next one comes from Chris. If I've got to paint two tones on a foam helmet, will taping it off work with Poly Latex 60 or should the whole thing be latex and then just airbrush with acrylic? I would probably airbrush it with acrylic. I don't think uh, you can mask off latex rubber. I think that would probably go poorly when you try to peel away the masking tape, it'll probably just peel away the uh, the latex. So, base coat it with a tinted uh, latex, excuse me, latex rubber, your, whatever your main color is, and mask that off and use either a rubber cement paint, which would work really well, or um, you could use an acrylic paint, but know that if that rubber stretches at all or flexes at all, it will probably, the, the acrylic paint will probably peel off. So look up um, I, the video on this. We'll link to this as well. The video on how I painted this, this is all done with rubber cement paint. So check that out. And you can definitely mask that stuff. And airbrush it. Let's do another one. Thanks, Chris. The next one is best gamer ever. It's quite a claim there. Just wondering, what tips do you have for someone who wanted to start mold making? You know what? I'm just going to point you to that molding and casting uh, video series once again. We'll have that linked down below. Uh, but a good general tip, though, start small. Do a one-part mold, do a small mold, uh, and then build from there. So uh, Because it's a lot less expensive when you screw up, and you will, if it's a much smaller piece. Uh, thank you, best gamer ever. Next one is uh, Brooks Creations, another regular. Do you have any recommendations for where I can get my head cast or buy the materials I can use for possibly doing it myself? We did a project with our buddy. We have two. One, we did a uh, an alginate mold, and we have a video on that on our YouTube channel. And uh, we did one with silicone with our buddy Bob from I Like to Make Stuff, and that video is on his channel. Obviously, links to all these down in the, the, the description. I'm keeping Brittany very busy right now. <laughs> um, all of those materials that can be purchased from SmoothOn, 
Uh, or if you have a local, um, maybe a pottery store or, or sculpture store, they might have that sort of stuff. Uh, pottery stores are hit and miss. Seattle Pottery has some of this stuff, but not all of it. I think they sold algae in it. But either way, look around or you can just order everything from the internet from uh, Smooth On. And also they have international uh, international distributors. So um, keep an eye out for those. Um, what else? Oh, and then you can do it yourself. I don't know if there are places that, that will do that for you. Um, but you can do it yourself. You just need a handful of friends. So like, like four good friends. If you have four good friends that can help you, three or four, you're good to go. Many, many hands helps out a lot. So check out those two videos. Pick up the materials from Smooth On or some other online distributor or some local place, and you're all set. Um, awesome. Steve's life. Li oh, holy crap, Brittany. Good, good call. Our buddy Steve did a life put out a life casting book. Um, we'll link to that in the show notes too. Uh, Steve Winsett is a wizard. He's a really amazing maker down in LA, and he did a, a book on life casting with Alginet. Uh, so you should go buy that. Okay. Uh, good luck with the headcast. Brooks Creations. Uh, Bueng Sang? Bueng? Bues? Gang? I'm pretty sure I nailed that. Uh, has a question for me. I'm going to give the glowing eyes a go for the first time. Any trip? Any tips for a new by making Terry Pratchett's Death of Rats costume? Uh, let's look at this picture. That looks pretty good. Kind of looking like a dead skull face thing with glowing eyes. And you're in luck. We got a video on that. <laughs> Eventually, this show is just going to be me talking about all the videos that I made. Um, I'll show it to you guys, though. We did a similar method uh, for our droggers. Almost identical. So if you look... If you look here... It's a skull face with glowing eyes, and you can actually see really well out from underneath the eyes. And it's done with LEDs, so there's this, a very simple circuit that this this handsome gentleman is going to tell you all about. Uh, using acrylic to cover the LEDs, and uh, those hide inside of the helmet. And this is kind of what... Oh, there's me making a goofy face. And this is kind of what it looks like from the inside. It actually it actually looks a lot better. So that's without the, um, the cloth obscuring my face. And that's with the cloth. So there you go. That's like exactly what you need. We have a video on it. It'll be linked down below. Go check that out. All right. Next question. Nick. Nick at Modulus Props. Uh, wants to know, I'm in the process of setting up a new basement shop space. Is there anything you've learned with the setup arrangement of your shop that you would like to do differently next time? Yeah, not have it in a basement. <laughs> the next shop I want to have next to the house, not in the house. Uh, mostly that's just because the ceiling is an issue. If you have a higher ceiling, awesome. But for us, it's an issue. Um... A lot of the stuff, a lot of the, the things with our shop that I would like to change, I can't because I don't own this house. Uh, we rent here. So things like getting the power uh, okay. <laughs> the power down here is terrible. Um, mostly, Most of the outlets are on 115 amp breaker. And if we plug in the heat gun to the wrong plug, the lights go off. Um, other than that, I found that the way you work is going to determine how your shop ends up getting arranged. And you won't really figure that out until you've been in that space for a while. So I don't know, just get in there, start making stuff and uh, be flexible. Let's go through a couple more. I'm going to end here pretty soon. Cause I've got another thing I got to run to, but we'll grab a couple more questions before we end it. Uh, Blasted props wants to know, I've been building a Space Marine costume for the past months, and I've been running into a bit of an issue. I need to build a skeleton system so it doesn't just flop. Any suggestions? He's tried PEX tubing, but he's having some issues. Um, here's a picture. Ta-da! 
And I'm just going to send you over to Gary Sterley's page. If you if you go to, uh, I believe he has a Facebook page, look up Gary Sterley Studios on uh, oh, on Facebook. Gary Sterley Studios. Thanks, Facebook. Gary Steele. That's not what I wanted. There we go. Gary Sterley Studios. He has um, a whole thing on his Space Marine armor. A whole album that goes through the whole thing. And if I can find it, I'll show you. Ah, we'll link to it. we'll link to it in the show notes. But he has a whole album on his Space Marine build. Ah, so just go see how Gary did it and copy him. <laughs> but Gary Sterley Studios, look him up on Facebook. All right, let's grab a couple more. A couple more. That was blasted props. Thanks for the question. Leon wants to know: uh, I'm making Genji's helmet from Overwatch. How can I make the green parts glow with LEDs without people seeing them? I would also like to know a good way for me to see. Um, that's going to be kind of challenging because if you make it light up, the surface light up, you can't see through it. But something you could do is you have the visor part made out of, a, let's say, a green acrylic. And then it overlaps the helmet. And then behind the helmet, you have LEDs pointing down into the acrylic. To make that acrylic glow, you need something for it to hit. So if you if you trimmed a crosshatch into it, um, it would make those lines glow. And then from far away, it would kind of look like the whole thing is glowing. You're going to have to do a lot of trial and error to figure that out. Um, but that's one way to do it. Um, there's a lot of different ways to solve this problem. Um, that one might be the best. Um, you can also just have LEDs point on your face so that most of the area inside is lit up uh, and then have green acrylic on, on front of it. Again, give uh, give that uh, a whole bunch of different trial and error. But you can do some tests without having the helmet. You can get some acrylic and get some LEDs. You can do some tests. Try it out before committing to the whole thing. Good luck, Leon. Raptor Prop says, what would you recommend for a custom prop beer can label with detailed graphics, inkjet, vinyl, etc.? I would recommend uh, LaserJet. If you have a LaserJet printer, you can buy adhesive uh, paper and just print it out on a LaserJet printer. LaserJet won't run when it gets wet and your beer can's going to get wet. So laser print out your graphics on a sticker, wrap that around your uh, beer can, good to go. Uh, thank you, Raptor Prop. Cooksey wants to I'm just cramming out a couple more here. And then we'll we'll call it good. Cooksey wants to know, thinking about making a roadhog mask and bodysuit. Have you had experience making human shapes out of foam? I haven't, but I have a friend who has. <laughs> uh, let's say uh, Steve. Stephen K. Smith did a giant uh, orc sort of muscle suit thing with like upholstery foam and I think he may have used latex look up SKS props again he's got a Facebook page check it out over there he has a whole album and I believe an RPF thread which if we can find that that'll get linked in the show notes um we'll put a um we'll put a uh, a link to that in the show notes you can go check out his orc build thread uh, one more. Nick says, I've officially started working on my Soldier 77 Pulse Rifle. The bl blueprint's just about done. Uh, let's see. It's over three feet long. It'll need to be reinforced. I was thinking of using a sheet of MDF. Um, do you think this is the best route? Also, besides sandwiching the foam onto the board, what part of the gun would you tackle first? I like to just use PVC pipe. Uh, you could start with the barrel of the gun, kind of the way I did the... Um, What's it called? Uh, the Jade Rabbit for the Foamsmith 2 book. I just use the barrel. It runs most of the way of the gun, um, most of the length of the gun. And then uh, it shows, you can see it on some parts where it's a barrel. And then it gets covered with layers of foam where you can't see it. But it still runs the length of the gun and it supports it. So I would use PVC pipe. 
Um, what part would you tackle first? Uh, when I'm working on, well, you're gonna have to build that structure first. You really have. Again, if you if you read Foam Smith Two, just a little bit of a plug here. If you read that book, you'll see exactly how I dove through a very similar build um, in the Jade Rabbit. Awesome. That is all the questions I have here, and I gotta get rolling. Uh, holy cow, that was a bunch of amazing questions. You guys are awesome for bringing uh, the good stuff today. Thank you again so much for uh, getting a hold of us and helping us make content. Uh, that's all I got. We'll do this again next week. Um, we've got the um, RC car tire video going up tomorrow. And on Monday, we've got our epic foam ceiling video. Look forward to that and look forward to hanging out with us on the next episode of Prop. Live. See you then. Yeah.